Hello everybody, my name is Terry. I am a member of Key Smash Studios and today we are going to be looking into the very basics of coding in Unity. This is intended for people who really don't know much about coding at all and they've seen game engines that kind of want to make games but they're not quite sure about coding so I'm going to go through all the basics so you can start on that journey of, of learning code. So we'll go through the basics, it should be a lot of fun, and we'll get through this together. First I'll say if you find this video to be helpful and you want to see more content like this, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, it really does help us a lot. And with that said, we're going to jump right into this. Okay, so Unity uses the c -sharp language, which is a scripting language, and it's almost English-like. There are, there are some languages that it's a little more complex. C-sharp is pretty much English. So I've created a script in our assets. It's called code intro, and when I open it, I have some of the things that we're going to talk about today. Uh, I just want to go through sort of what some of this stuff is so we don't get overwhelmed. The first thing I want to say is that this is a comment. Anytime you do two slashes like this, it's a comment. The computer does not read this comment. So I can do anything I want here, including a bunch of gibberish, and nothing happens. The second little bit here is a long comment. If you have something where you know it's going to be a bunch of different lines and you have this really long comment that you want to make, um, that's how you do it. It's a slash followed by a star, and then you end it with a star and a slash. Um, I, I just wanted to clarify what these were because I use them at times to explain things. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize these, and I'm going to talk about the very basics of coding, and that is variables. So variables are something that is used to hold one or more values. So in this region variables here, I've listed a few examples of of variables, and we'll go through what each of them are. So the first thing we're going to talk about is an integer. So an integer is a whole number between negative 2.1 some odd billion and positive 2.1 some odd billion. And that is a limit based on how the integer is stored. It's stored in data. So on our computer we store things in bytes, and that is a limit dictated by the size of an integer when it stores that integer. So an integer can be something like health, right? So, you know, when you have 100 health on a character, that's usually an integer. And when you take 10 damage, we just decrease that integer by 10. So you can manipulate this integer any way that you want, either plus, minus, divide, things like that. But it's always going to be a whole number. So if you do 5 divided by 2, and instead of 2.5, you're going to get rounded up to 3, because it's always a whole number. A float is a four byte decimal with six to nine dig digits of precision. So just the opposite of an integer, a float or a double, they both are decimals, um, can handle that, that point something. So five divided by two is 2.5 in a float. Whereas in an integer, it would stay as a whole number. On a float, it stays as a decimal, and it can go between six and nine digits long. This is usually something that you use in the Unity because we don't really need things to be more precise than a few digits. Anything beyond that is actually just kind of a little bit of overkill. It'll still work, but, you know, it's just a little bit of overkill. Double is the next step beyond that. It's 15 to 17 digits of precision based on how large the starting number is. That's why there's a range there. So these three variables here can store a number. One's a whole number, one's a decimal based number, uh, you know, 2.5. The other one is a more precise decimal number. So an example of these decimals would be like, you know, 3.5. I, I want to wait 3.5 seconds. Um, being able to have that half second or that half value is why we use a float or a double. Another type of variable is a string. So a string is a collection of characters that represents some text. So if I have a string named S, it says hello there. If I have a string called my name, I can say my name is equal to Terry. And then I have a string named my name that's just that collection of letters that says my name is Terry. A boolean is a true or false variable. So for example, you might have like a character and you want to know when can you jump in a game. You know, you don't want to be able to jump in midair 
you don't want to be able to jump when you're falling potentially based on your game so you say you know am i on the ground yes or no true or false yes i am on the ground great then i'm then i'm allowed to jump and then another variable this is another example for unity is a game object it's the base object in the scene the like the very basic raw thing in a scene of unity unity is almost entirely built on objects and getting into objects can get a bit complicated but i'll just say like for example this square in the scene is an object that is this cube so a game object is going to let us pull that cube in so i have put these two here a public game object cube one and then this I'll get to in a second. But this public game object cube one, wherever we attach the script in Unity, so on this cube I have a script here. It's called code intro. That's the that's the code we're in. It has a spot here called cube one, and I can click and drag this cube into that cube one, or I can hit this little dot and select whatever I want. So if I want to make my directional light for whatever region cube one, I can do that. And you can see that my object named cube one, the variable is named cube one, is actually the object directional light. But I'm gonna set it up as cube one just because that can get confusing. The other thing that I did was I did a serialized field private game object. And this is just to so show the public and private things are, are not that scary. For right now, while you're making your own stuff, you can just do a public game object. If you're doing something that you're going to release to someone else, you might want to have private objects. That way the, the object can't be accessed outside of the script. And the way that we can still use it within the editor is by putting serialized field just above it. So that's just two ways to call an object. It's two separate ways to call two separate objects. I have one called plain one, one called cube one. And as you can see in the editor here on this script, I have cube and plane attached to cube one and plane one. So those are the six different types of variables. There's actually more types of variables, but those are the six most common that you'll use. So yeah, so that's the basics of variables. So I'm gonna close up this region and I'm gonna talk a little bit about our very first concept of coding and that's the if statement. So if can be used if we're trying to see in code if something is true or false. So an example of this, I can say, remember I was talking about this string where I said, you know, um, my name is Terry. I can create the string called my name, my name is Terry. And if that string, my name, so if we create a string up here, So we have a string called my name and it's Terry. And if that string is equal to literally just Terry, we can do some code. And the code that I've chosen to do is debug.log. So in Unity, this is the equivalent of a console output. In C sharp, uh, that opens up a little window, sort of like a command prompt, um, sort of like this. But in Unity, it's going to output anything in the debug.log down here on the console. That doesn't happen when you build the game, but while you're creating it and testing things, debug.log is actually very useful. So that's our first introduction into what an if does. If this is not true, then anything inside these two brackets doesn't run. It only runs if my name is equal to that. So if I put my name is equal to Chris, it will not say, yay, Terry. But like I said, this is commented out. This is a long comment. Uh, so we don't, we, we don't need to, to deal with that. That was just an example of how ifs work. The next thing that I want to talk about are functions in Unity. So there's several built-in functions. These are the six most important ones and the ones we need to understand how they work to start understanding how we would code in Unity. So functions are essentially like a block of code. In these functions, you can do certain things. And Unity has six that are pre-programmed. The engine itself will run and dictate when these run, and we can sort of exploit that to do whatever we want with our game. So for example, the first function is called awake. This happens 
at the very start of a scene being loaded. You might think of a, a, a use for this as like, if you have something that's super important that you need to load at the start of a scene, such as like you're opening a file and you're saying, okay, here's the player name, here's their health, this is where they were last time, like a save location. Um, you first pull up the save location as you're loading the scene, and then you put them in the right place when they start again. So anything that's super important that it runs first, you put that in awake. The second one is called start, and this is very similar, uh, but it actually goes after awake. Um, don't worry about the code here. Um, I'll explain it in a second, but start happens before the first frame is called. So when you hit play on your game, or if you're inside the actual build of the game, um, before the first screen refresh, start is called. So this is traditionally a place that you instantiate variable values. So up here, I have three variables, three Booleans, um, and I've set them to true up here, but sometimes you don't always know exactly where stuff is. So it's pretty safe to instantiate stuff in start and just make sure that when you run a scene, um, your variables are set because if they're not set, you can't use them, you can't change them. So I have some variables here and I'll get to them in a bit, um, but this runs second. It runs after a week, but before we start playing the game, before the first screen refresh happens. Uh, and I'll explain what I mean by refresh in a second. So I'm gonna skip fixed update for a second uh, and just go down this to update. So I was talking about screen refreshing a second ago, and every time the screen refreshes in, up in Unity, update is called. This means that we can do things like monitor health. So if in our code we take damage, we're playing the game, we run into something, we take damage, in our code, our health goes down to, to 90 from 100. Every time the screen refreshes, we also put in our code, hey, UI that displays the health, go check and make sure that the health hasn't changed in the code. And it comes down to the health. Is, oh, actually, the health went down to 90 from 100. So the UI then changes. So this is called once per frame. It's every screen refresh. And this is where a large chunk of the code that we would do in a game happens. Uh, we might create functions that are called here, and I'll go over that in a future episode. But most of the code that we do on a game is going to be called and controlled in update. The next one I'm going to talk about is fixed update. And this is because Unity has two separate controls of the passage of time. One is the screen refresh rate, and that's for update. And the other one is the physics update. So every so often, Unity will calculate the physics of a scene. And this is because it's really expensive to calculate the physics of a scene. Essentially what it does is it goes and finds every single vertice in the scene as a whole. So when you have a model that has, you know, a thousand triangles that build, build this model of a, of a tree, it goes and maps out every single vertice and makes sure and does all the math to make sure nothing's colliding with that tree. So physics is expensive to do from a calculation standpoint. So it doesn't happen quite as often as update unless you change it in the Unity project settings. So an example of what you might do here is character movement. We don't need to calculate character movement every single frame, but it would be really help helpful if we calculate it before physics is called every single time. So in the future, we'll create a character controller and in the character controller, we'll move our character in fixed update because we just need to calculate that when physics occurs, not every screen refresh. The next function is late update. And late update is called once per frame. It happens after every single other update so the fixed update and the regular update, and it happens after all the animations within the scene are done. So this might be a spot where you can have something that is determined by other objects. So for example, if you have a character that's running around and you have a camera tracking that character, 
You want to make sure that the character finishes its animation or that frames animation. You want to make sure that character finishes its animation before you calculate where you need to move the camera so that the camera is always looking at the player. So in late update, when we create our character controller in a future episode, we are going to control where the camera moves just right here in late update. The last important function that they code for us is on collision enter. Now there's a number of these functions. These are just six of the more important ones. And of those, on collision is a little bit different because there's a few different ways to do it. There's on collision enter, on collision stay, on collision exit. But essentially all of these control when something collides with an object. So it reports any collisions from an object calling an event on that object script. And that's a fancy way to say, did two objects touch in the scene? And if they did touch, what do we do with it? So for example, if you've run across a health pack in a game, did I run through the health pack? Yes or no? Okay, I did. What happens now that I ran through the health pack? Well, you disable the health pack, you give the player health. All that code that happens only when you run into the health pack is going to happen in a function like this. So that's the end of the functions. You might notice that I have some if statements in here. And this is so we can explore when the things happen in the script. Up here, I have some booleans. And this is just so these only go once. So we don't really need to debug every single frame of a game. We just need to know the order that they go through when they process. So on awake, I will debug one. On start, two. I think you'll see the pattern here. Fixed update, three. Update four, late update five. So this will calculate on the scene when am I going through one, two, three, and four, and five. And in our code, it's just going to let us know through the console where these events are happening in our scene. So as I hit play, we'll see that right away we get all of them. I'll unplay because there's 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 nothing happening in the scene. But right away we get all of these events that happen. And they all happen before we could process. There's not this is not a slow process. This happens essentially all of this will happen before the first screen refresh goes through. So the first sixtieth of a second, all of this is done. The first thing that pops out is a one. So in our code, we know that the first thing that our code did was it came to void awake. And that's good, right? We know that our awake function happens at the very start of the scene load. Then comes start. That's our debug two. And we can see that that happens second. So when we set some variables, we initialize things in a scene, that happens second. Third is fixed update. And that's because on the places where you calculate physics, you calculate physics before you calculate regular updates. And that includes the first time you press play. As soon as you start, you start calculating physics. And then you might do like three regular updates before you do fixed update and update. So if I were to explain this with a picture, we will put a little line for every refresh rate on your monitor. So this is one refresh, two refreshes, three refreshes, four refreshes. Our physics will calculate before update on the first refresh. It won't calculate on the second or third, but it will calculate before update on the fourth refresh. And that's because physics, as I said, is expensive. But when it does calculate, we want it to calculate before other things because physics are really important to games. We don't want to fall through the ground. So when we do calculate physics, we want it to go first. So physics comes through in third. Then comes the regular update. Remember, this is where we put most of our normal code. So if I had a UI and I had a health and you know we wanted to change that health, it would happen here. This is really fast code. It really just runs most of our scripts. And then in late update, that comes last, right? That's what it's designed to do. After every, every other update happens, after all the animations happen, then we do late update. And we can see and we can see in our code that we go one, two, three, 
four, five in order. So these are the six main functions that Unity uses. These are just an example of some of the pre-programmed functions, um, but we need to understand what they are before we can start coding. In our next episode, we'll start coding actually, and we'll go through some of the pretty cool stuff that you can do with code and start our process on making a game. So I'm gonna close this, these regions and say, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe on this video. All that stuff really does help us. If you're interested in more, go ahead and hit that bell so you're notified next time we continue this or we have several other uploads that happen on our channel. We upload every Wednesday and Saturday. If you found this to be really helpful and you're starting to can go through this series, please consider taking a look at our Patreon. You'll find a link in the description. If you would like to be part of a community, we have a Discord channel. You're going to find a link in the description where you can go in there and ask us questions, things of that nature, or just come in and say hi. We'd love to hear from you. Check out our social media and Twitch. You'll find the links in the description below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help us out. And hopefully we'll see you next week.